Once you've determined that the controller and valve are working properly, you need to take a closer look at the wiring to determine where the problem may lie. In this case, you need to first track the wire pass with your wire and valve locator. Then you can zero in on the problem using a ground fault locator. Use caution with this equipment. The ground fault locator uses high voltage bursts to locate leakage in the wire path. Be sure you're not touching the red and black leads when you power up the locator. It's also important to disconnect any wires connected to the irrigation controller before powering up the voltage transmitter. A ground fault locator is used to locate faulty wiring in the irrigation system. Faults can be caused by shorts, leakage to earth, or faulty wire splices. An earth fault or open fault is normally caused by damage to a cable's insulation. If any wire is exposed through the insulation and contacts the earth or other conductive elements, this can cause the electrical signal to bleed out of the cables in the path of least resistance. A short circuit fault is caused when the hot and neutral conductors are openly touching and bypassing resistors like a solenoid or decoder. This will cause the controller to overload due to high current draw. The most common faults in irrigation wiring that you'll be looking for are chewed insulation by rodents, a stake or post hitting the wire while being driven into the ground, a buried splice that was not properly waterproofed, a wire that has been crushed or overstretched, insulation that is brittle and cracking from old age or periods of sun exposure. Before you get too far into the weeds and wire tracking, ask the property owner if recent work has been done on the site around the time the problem first occurred. If you're familiar with the site, take a walk around and see if you notice any that stand out or look different from your last visit. These are things like planting new trees or shrubs, installing a new fence, repairing the irrigation main line, heavy rainfall, rodent infestation, any city or county road work, etc. Some problems can be solved before the big tools even come out of the truck. If everything looks good, continue preparing your ground fault locator for action. If you're not sure what's causing the problem and you decide to pull out the advanced tools, it's important to remember that the ground fault locator, GFL, is best used in combination with a wire tracer. It's important to know the direction in which the wire is run to properly utilize the GFL. Once you've traced out and marked the wire, grab your GFL and follow the manufacturer's instructions for setting up and using the tool properly. In this scenario, we're using the Armada GFL 3000. To set this device up, first ensure the batteries are fully charged and ready to use. Before starting, ensure you have all the parts you need to do the job. Inside the transmitter box, there is a handheld grounding rod, a charging plug, a red and black lead with alligator clips attached, a power board with voltage selector, power switch, and analog signal indicator, and an A-frame signal receiver. First, you must attach the analog display to the A-frame with the two screws located on the A-frame. These are captive in the frame, so they should not fall out. Next, attach the red and black connectors from the analog display to the corresponding black and red ports located on the A-frame. Now, turn the knob on the display clockwise to power up the device. Press the red battery check button on the display to ensure that your batteries have enough charge for the job. If your reading comes up short, remove and replace the battery. Lastly, remove the rubber tip covers from each probe on the receiver. Take the grounding stake out of the box and press it firmly into the soil to create good ground contact. With the power off, clip the black lead onto the ground rod and clip the red lead onto the faulty wire. The transmitter has two power settings, 2400 and 3200 volts. In most cases, the power output switch will be set to 2400 volts and stay right there. If you're searching for an issue very far away from the transmitter or a leak to ground that is somewhat minor or subtle, you can toggle the switch to the 3200 volt output. You may not know if either of these are the case until you've started with the location process. The use of the 3200 volt setting may also be necessary in very dry soil with poor conductivity. 
without touching either wire. Power on the transmitter with the power output set to the lower setting. With the power on, you'll begin hearing a beep from the transmitter about every five seconds. This sound indicates that the high voltage surge is being sent down the wire path. The transmitter will continue to do this until it's turned off or runs out of battery. You're now ready to grab the A-frame signal receiver to begin searching for the ground fault. Move about 10 feet away from the valve box along the wire path that you flagged while you were tracing the wire. Press the A-frame tips into the ground parallel with the wire path. Make sure you press them all the way into the ground to make good ground contact. Now, allow the device to sit in the ground until you hear a beep from the transmitter. Keep your eye on the analog display when you hear the beep. It will indicate the direction of the fault along the wire path. Immediately after the beep occurs, you'll see the needle on the analog display ping one direction and back in the other direction. If the needle movement is off the charts, dial back the knob on the display counterclockwise to refine your readings. The direction the needle moves first is the direction in which the fault is occurring along the wire path. If the first movement is in the direction away from the valve box, pull the A-frame out of the ground and walk about halfway to the controller location along the wire path. Then place the A-frame back in the ground parallel with the wire path, direct your attention back to the display, and wait for another beep from the transmitter. We're utilizing the 50% method to cut the areas that we're searching in two halves to make the process go faster and more efficiently. From this point, if the needle pings toward the controller first, then you know the issue is between that point and the controller, and you've now cut the area in half. If the needle pings toward the valve first and then back the other way, the location of the fault is between that point and the valve. At this point, you can continue tracking the area in which the fault was detected. Continue this 50% method until you found a location where moving the A-frame up and down fractionally gives you readings toward the valve, then back away from the valve. You can micro-locate the fault by doing this until the needle does not move at all. If the needle does not move in one location or the other, you're directly above the fault. Now, turn the A-frame 90 degrees perpendicular to the wire path. This will tell you exactly where the wire path is running through that area. You'll follow the same procedure and move the A-frame side to side until you get another null. Move the flag to this point and you're within fractions of an inch of the ground fault. Be sure to power off the unit before you begin digging or searching for the fault underground. Now that you've located the fault, dig up the area to the known approximate depth from your wire tracing results and repair or replace the wire. A ground fault locator, when used properly and in conjunction with the wire and valve locator, can save you hours of aimless searching on the job site. This is a specialty service and should be charged as such. Your hourly rate will be higher, but in the long run, this will save your customer money and instill confidence in your abilities as an irrigation technician.